Yay Networks. Hello, everyone. Hello, we're back. We are back with another astonishing episode. Wow. Of Junk Air Mayhem. I'm going to begin picking a new adjective <laughs> and off the, just the top of my head each week. Has and nothing then, to do with what we're actually well, going to talk about. Well, we'll see oh. if I remember by the end, which chances are I will not. I'll remember that you said astonishing. We'll see if it fit my random adjective. That's fun. Today's episode is astonishing. I feel like that's not going to fit. We're going to be telling you about a nearly fatal injury <laughs> that Hannah suffered. I did suffer a severe injury. It was not fatal to me, maybe almost fatal to you in a well, way. Both of us suffered. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. I suffered way worse. <laughs> Hannah suffered way, way worse. <laughs> Uh, well, we'll see. I mean, we'll let the viewers decide. Okay. Uh, then we are going to be talking about parenting styles. Yeah, this was my idea because <laughs> I follow a lot of like parenting Instagram pages yeah. and I've just like been more exposed to that kind of stuff. And You're Shane, in the know. Yeah, Shane hasn't really at all. And so I, you know, I realized that he doesn't know even the names of the kind of well-known parenting styles. And I thought it'd be fun to hear his thoughts on them and as I like, describe them to him. And it was like, we should do something about parenting styles. I was like, oh yeah, like, what like, is like good and bad? <laughs> like, like, what? Parent well. <laughs> Taking care of your kids yeah. style. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna, I'm going to learn about parenting styles. Yeah. Um, and then at the end... If we're not already in a fight by then, yeah, we'll see. We're gonna play a game called Agree or Disagree, which is exactly what it sounds like. We um, need a better name. Well, that's the name right now. Yeah, but Agree or Disagree is very clear. But like Junkyard Mayhem is supposed to have a more fun name. I can't believe you didn't come up with something else like Concur or, you know, Yay or Nay. That's not really that fun. Oh yeah, it's called Yay or Nay Bloodbath Showdown <laughs> Junkyard Massacre. Is okay. that a better? That's nah. fine. Jump Air Massacre will be played at the end. Um, but let's get into... Like, like impish or admirable in the office. Right. Like that. I How did you it. not come I up named with it. something like that? Because I had this idea five minutes ago. <laughs> I did not have time to prepare a name. Okay. So you have a list of things or something? That we're I have gonna... a list of statements okay. that are maybe divisive. Oh, boy. And we're going to see if you and I... Agree with them or disagree with them. Okay. And with each other. So should we start by telling them about my injury? Yeah, let's rewind about a week. Yeah. I mean, jokes aside, this was not a fun experience for either of us, especially him. No, this was horrible. This was about 10 days ago. <laughs> uh, I was <laughs> at the doctor's office. Our IVF clinic. At our IVF clinic. And I was getting an ultrasound. Uh -huh. To be in this ultrasound, <laughs> you... <laughs> To receive this ultrasound, you need to be in stirrups on a on a table. Okay? It's an internal ultrasound. It's an internal <laughs> ultrasound. So I was laying on a table. I had my feet in stirrups, and this is very important to the story. I'm not just telling you this for no reason. So it all is fine. It goes and then well. I cut my finger. <laughs> <laughs> Three days later, I yeah, I fell over. No. Um, so I we do the ultrasound. I get up off the table at the end, Shane is in the room with me uh -huh. and I'm like, oh my God, my back really hurts. Like I must yeah. have laid wrong, but my back is really hurting. And I was so blase yeah. about it. I was like, oh, that's annoying. Like must have twinged it on the table. Yeah. Cause you know, like she didn't sit wrong when we're like going for a, a drive or yeah, whatever. And true. it will affect her back yeah. randomly at times. Yeah. Uh, so I'm very used to her saying, oh, my back hurts. And I just had to say, yeah, like whatever, yeah. it'll be fine. And I thought it was like that too. So I was like stretching my hamstrings, like all the normal things that I'll do mm -hmm. to try to get my back to stop hurting. And we went out to breakfast after. I was like stretching in the parking lot. And I was yeah. like, this feels different. It's not really my back. It's like my hip connecting to my back. It's, it was really weird. And this was right at the beginning of the injection phase. It was the first day. Of the IVF cycle. Yeah. So we were both unsure if it was maybe the injection. Yeah, or, I was like, this is weird. Is this really No, but I knew it was from the table. I was like, I was fine. I got off the table injury then maybe i was unsure because i definitely <laughs> you didn't believe me i definitely was like oh maybe like your ovaries just yeah feel weird and you're not used to it because like, you were like how did you injure yourself yeah. laying down laying down for all of five minutes yes yeah. it was literally five minutes 
So <laughs> basically, it got worse and worse that day to the point where I couldn't stand up straight. And I could only walk at like a 90 degree yeah. angle. I think by the end of breakfast, you were walking out of the yeah. restaurant like bent over. Yeah. Like, and I was like, oh, this is serious. This is serious. <laughs> uh, I, I've had back injuries before, not in a couple of years. And so like when my back had been hurting, which was more, it was more when I was swimming. I think it was just like, I don't know, I would hurt my back that way. It would always be better by the next day. Like I've never had a multiple day back injury. So I was like, it's fine. I'll sleep. It'll work its way out, whatever happened. And the next day, it'll be fine. I wake up worse, worse. Like significantly worse. Cannot stand. She's like, Shane, I don't know if I can get out of bed. Yep. And I was like, oh, this is... This is a problem. Yep. Literally <sighs> couldn't walk. Had to hold on to Shane's chair, like lay over it. I could like walk if I wasn't upright. It was, I could sit fine. I could lay fine. I could not stand up straight. I don't understand what was happening to me. Anyway, long story short, this lasted for five or six days. It's still a little bit painful, uh, but it's like almost completely gone. I couldn't lift Shane. My mom was lifting him. Yeah. I mean, it, it devolved over those yeah. five days. Like it got to the point where she was, Almost bedridden. Yeah. Like, like you, <laughs> you weren't bedridden, but getting out of any position yeah. but laying was severely painful. Exactly. We were contemplating going to the ER. Yeah. We almost went to the ER. It was the weekend, so we couldn't go to urgent care. It would have been the ER. And I was like, it's not, it's not an ER emergency. It's like an urgent yeah. care, or like, you know, so we just ended up waiting it out. And it's, it's almost better. Um, just one more thing about your mom helping out. Yeah. We always say like, oh, Liz is around as a backup helper, you know, if yeah. Hannah's ever not able to lift me. But it's been three five. or four years, five years since Liz has had to lift me. It's been five years. Five years. Yeah. yeah. So we didn't know if she we really didn't could. quite <laughs> know if we could. So when Hannah was at her worst, I went to the Liz and I was like, do you think you can still lift me? Yeah. Uh, she was like, yeah, I got this. And it ended up being easy for her. Yeah. And um, this is a new chair, so it was tricky. It's a different position than like she's yeah. ever done before, but it was fine. She was fine. Yeah. Totally good at it. And that was actually, in a weird way, very useful as you are getting to the end of IVF now. Yeah. And you have a few different procedures where you may not be able to lift me for a day or two. Mm-hmm. Now we know that your mom is able and we're yeah. not like just hoping. Yep, exactly. <laughs> but you made it through your injury. Oh my kind God. Kind of. It's not over yet. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's it's almost better. So strange. I don't even know what that was. Everyone is going to leave a comment yeah. giving their diagnosis. So I know, but it was just <laughs> weird that it, did, it didn't hurt sitting. I couldn't stand up straight. Mm-hmm. It was really odd, but it's, yeah. On a scale of 10, when it was at its worst, how bad was the pain? Uh, like eight? I don't know. It was cool. I couldn't stand up. I, I just couldn't. Like, I don't know what that even would be. It's another disability perk that I am kind of like a built-in yeah. uh, water. And I had your backup wheelchair, your old one. I was like, if I need that, I could have used it, but I had nowhere to go. Yeah. I was worried about doing another ultrasound. I had to do one like four days later. Yeah. And I it was still hurting then. So I was like, oh my God, I'm going to re-injure it. But I've done every other day now for 10 days and so it's fine. She asked the technician, instead of laying on the table, and I just lay on the floor. Uh-huh. And they did the I ultrasound. stood, actually. I stood for it. Standing <laughs> internal like ultrasound. cattle. <laughs> Oh, my God. And with that image <laughs> seared into our minds, let's take a trip break, and then we'll be back, and I'm going to learn about parenting, parenting because we're hopefully going to have a child at some point. Wow. Uh, and I need to know how to parent it. Yeah, you do. <laughs> so this week I found myself with another injury. You have been oh my God. unwell for I the past re- few weeks. I really have been. And this week's sponsor is a amazing resource for people like me who find themselves repeatedly in medical situations in which they probably should seek the advice of a doctor. Yeah, ZocDoc has thousands of medical professionals that are there to help you, or Hannah. They listen like a friend, and they give you the expert care that you need when you need it, which, again, for Hannah is every other week, it seems. All the time. We've all been there where you're trying to find a cause for your symptoms, like excruciating back pain so you can't stand up uh, and you stumble down a TikTok or Google rabbit hole full of questionable advice from so-called experts, which is how I found myself stretching on the floor uh-huh. in all sorts of <laughs> positions I last week. I walked in and her feet are up in the air. <laughs> so what are you doing? She's like, I'm stretching out my spine. Yeah, it didn't help. 
yeah, him and I both know that when you find the right doctor, you can just feel it. You feel heard and at ease and like they're going to take good care of you. You don't get that feeling with Google. But on ZocDoc, you'll find quality doctors who focus on you, listen to you, and prioritize your care. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. When you're not feeling your best and you're just trying to hold it together, finding great care shouldn't take up all of your energy. That's where ZocDoc comes in. Using their free app that millions of users rely on, you can find the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule. You can book an appointment with a few taps in their app and start feeling better faster with ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com junkyard and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash junkyard, ZocDoc dot com slash junkyard. Now back to the show. And we are back. We're ready to talk about parenting styles. Shane, I would like to open by asking you <laughs> not even... Not even what parenting style you want. I just want you to say, Uh name one parenting style. What is one? (laughs) This is not fair. You don't have to know anything about it. it. I don't know anything. (laughs) Uh, Just name one. um, Okay, I can figure out one. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Reward-based. Punishment-based. Negative, uh, what's negative? Negative reinforcement. (laughs) I mean that, I, that positive reinforcement. That that's not on my list. Like, Freudian. <laughs> yeah. I follow the Freudian parent. Uh, <laughs> uh, those military? are all. Military. No. Okay. No. None of the. I mean, those are those could be styles if you want to make them styles. They're not on this list. This is a list of eight. Basically, there are like four scientific ones that pop up that okay. are like, but they're they're tried and true. No, they're not the tried and true. It's like the psychological ones where like uh, one of them is neglectful. Like oh. you're not going to pick that on purpose. It's that the, those four are like Already what just, ends right, up happening. I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like those are, I have those in this list and we can talk about them. But then in this, in this list that I found, there are four additional ones that are more of like what you think of where it's kind of choices that you're making. Well, what some people think of, not me. Not but you. <laughs> you're thinking punishment based. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go out on the limb and say that. We do not want to do the neglectful yeah. parenting style. Yeah. That sounds like a bad one. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to read you the four that are like the, you know, the psychological ones. All right. I want you to tell me which one you think is the best. And okay. these four are like, there is one that is scientifically okay. supposed to be best. Yeah, was like, this is going to be easy, but go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Authoritative. <laughs> okay. That's how I live my life. Neglectful. Uh-huh. That's how Hannah treats me. Permissive. Okay. Authoritarian. Oh, it's not <laughs> I easy. Know, as soon Re- as I started. Authoritative is the first one. Yes. Authoritative, neglectful, permissive, authoritarian. All right. I'm going to just take you through my thoughts. When thinking about authoritative versus authoritarian. Yes. Authoritarian sounds like dictator. Uh-huh. And so I'm going to say that's not a good one. Yeah. Permissive. While we want to allow our children to do things, Uh feels like it was named to describe being too permissive, allowing too much. Mm -hmm. Like parents are just like, do whatever you want, figure it out. Yeah. Which there are parts of that that I might agree with, but not fully. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with A, authoritative, and hope that that is correct. Am I right? For you, one million dollars, <laughs> you are correct. Hey, good job! Man, ready to be a dad? Yeah, you were pretty. I mean, you pretty much nailed it. <laughs> the, the only thing I would say is that the permissive one isn't so much like just figure it out. It's more very, very like loving and afraid to confront your child. Okay. So this like it's it the says, one to be your friend more than yes. A parent. It literally says seeks to be child's best friend. Inconsistent rules. Very loving and nurturing. Avoids confrontation. Like too lenient, responsive, but not demanding. So you just, you know, you don't have any like expectations for your child. You're just kind of like, yeah. you don't want to, you know, it's like, rock the boat. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like you're almost not parenting. Exactly. You're just being a friend. It's also known as indulgent parenting. Also, I feel like we should give the disclaimer here yeah. that people probably are going to have strong opinions oh, about yeah. this. And like, if we say things that, 
don't jive with how you yes. parent your kids, we're not saying you're bad. No, and we're unless not Unless you are, unless you are bad. <laughs> unless you're doing neglectful parenting. <laughs> I believe that one is uh, pretty bad. But like, don't don't think that this article and our opinions are the law. Yeah. Like, but, you know? Yeah. To each their own. Um, again, unless you're awful. So <laughs> neglectful is like not meeting child's emotional or physical needs. Uh-huh. Home isn't safe, like that kind of stuff. I, I aim to create a non-safe home. <laughs> For our children. Okay, moving Here, on. Little Timmy, you want to play with this knife? I'm being permissive and not helpful. Then we've got authoritarian, which is also known as strict parenting. So you were spot on with a dictator okay. thing. That's like limited open dialogue. You're not really describing why things are the way they are. Right. Uh, children are expected to follow a strict set of rules. That, feels, all- that feels like the thing of like... You will not have a cookie. Yeah. And the kid's like, why? I want one. And you're like, I so. because I said so. I'm yeah. the parent. Yeah. Respect me. Yeah. Using punishment to teach a lesson. Mm-hmm. Um, ch- the child is offered limited choices or decisions about their life. And you res- like there's not, well, not a lot of warmth and affection. Yeah. So now to authoritative, the one that you picked is the best, winner, winner, chicken dinner. which says this is often identified as the most effective way of parenting. Boom. So in this one, you're holding high expectations, but you're understanding. It's not like the you know dictator, dictator uh, method. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's structure and routine in your day. There are consequences when rules are broken. There's uh-huh. open communication, and you speak to your child without judgment. So it says the key trait of this style in authoritative parenting is the open communication and speaking to your child without reprimand or judgment. Yeah. So you just that you makes know, sense. Talking because it's like a kid. It's just figuring out the world. Yeah, exactly. So to be, I mean, unless it's something that you've told them a hundred times and they still are not doing it correctly, well, then I'll be like, so. hey, you're being a little bit dumb. But like, uh, they're also just people, you know, like you yeah, wouldn't yeah. speak to someone, like to an adult, right? the way that a lot of people speak to kids and you wouldn't have the same expectations yeah. for an adult. You know, if, if an adult knocks, like if I knock over something in the kitchen uh-huh. and you were like, what are you doing? What is wrong with you? Be careful. Yeah. You know, I like I'm I would be very upset. I remember like having accidents like that. Yeah. At the dinner table, like knocking over my milk. Yeah. And my parents were very much like, That's okay. Yeah. Like that's okay, we'll clean it up. Nice. Like and not not in like a you know, they weren't not frustrated or annoyed. Yeah. It's not like they were like this is perfect. <laughs> but they were like, oh, you have to be careful. Yeah. Like, that's why you look when you're moving your hands. Yeah. You know, things like that. Exactly. <laughs> that, that was the lesson that they gave me. Look where you're moving your hands. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I feel like you and I have a strong communication mm-hmm. ability yeah. and like tendency in our own relationship. Yeah. So definitely. I think we would tend towards communicating with our kid about why things are the way they are. Yeah. And I think something that I've learned a lot from the things that I've seen online about parenting Mm -hmm. are like having consequences that match up with what happened, Uh you know, so it's not like your kid, you know, hits you and you put them in timeout. Like Uh that's not a related consequence, you know, like if your kid hits you, maybe you remove yourself and you say like no hitting or we're not going to keep playing, you know, like, or you hit them back. Exactly. (laughs) You know, so having consequences, like if they can't stop putting sand in their mouth, they're just removed from the sandy environment. And like, that's your consequence and not like you don't get dessert Yeah. because eight hours later, that's, it doesn't match. That doesn't match, you know? So that kind of stuff I think is really interesting. So should we move on to the the other ones? Yeah, these I'm going to have no idea about. Yeah, <laughs> you can tell me what you think they are. Okay, okay. so free-range parenting. Oh, that sounds like something that's like the chicken that we buy. Yeah. <laughs> free-range chicken. Uh, free-range feels like just kind of like permissive, just like setting them loose and letting them roam the pastures and figure out the world. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Like not very strict. Do you think it's like... How do you, do you feel positively or negatively about it? I feel negatively about it. Okay. That's my my gut reaction. Okay. <laughs> so this article, like th- this article basically isn't saying like if it's positive or negative, but the characteristics that they list are provide a child with autonomy, self-reliance, and responsibility early and often. Oh, well, I like that. So I, I know. I already feel wrong. I okay. know. <laughs> Allow kids to have unsupervised time to explore their environments. Yes. And kid. teaching kids a realistic acceptance of personal risks. That all sounds good to me. I think that I, you, like, <laughs> I think both of us had a bit of that style growing up mm-hmm. just based on like how much we would play outside 
in the neighborhood, you yeah, know? Yeah, I, I thought that free range took it further than yes, that. Yes, I know. And, and I think like, it does. I think it does at times. Okay. Like, you definitely hear. It says uh, below, like, understandably, free range parenting is a highly debated topic. Uh-huh. It, you know, it revolves around, like, safety and, like, yeah. how much independence should a kid get? Because, like, yeah, my parents let my brother and I out around the neighborhood to play with our friends, like, at a pretty young age. Yeah. But there was structure to that. Yeah. You know, when we were young, young, it was like, you must stay within eyesight of the house. Yeah. And then it was like, all right, as you get a little older and more responsible, you're now allowed to go to your friend's house next door. Yeah. You know, it like slowly yeah. expanded as we proved that we were yeah. capable of not like killing ourselves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. All right. I like that, Hind. Yeah. I think we've talked a lot about like independence in children. And I think that you know, maybe right. not free range parenting all out, but like, you know, having your kid, yeah, you know, explore the world. Cause I think it's good things. to, you know, teach them lessons that will apply later in life. So yeah. that when they're 20, they're not like, can you make me a dinner? I don't know how to do it. Well, let's oh. move on to our next style. I think I'm going to be a authoritative free range parent. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect parent. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to do everything right from all of these categories. <laughs> okay. So the next one, you kind of led us into it. Helicopter parenting. Oh, I know that one. Oh, yeah? That's just like, well, I did that there. In the common you know, vernacular, yeah. that means like a parent that is on top of their kid yeah. all the time. Every decision is dictated by the parent. They are extremely worried about the kid's well-being and often like to a fault. Yeah. Like does not let them learn about the world it does not have autonomy Mm -hmm. stuff like that yeah uh so it's the coined term for over parenting Uh the parent is involved in a child's life in a way that is over controlling over protecting and over perfecting so you you nailed it yeah this says parents begin with good intentions to protect their child Uh they often solve problems for the child the child relies on the parent to solve issues like you said you know when they're 20 and they say i don't know how to cook Whatever, grilled cheese. Yeah. Uh, And then child may exhibit decreased confidence and self-esteem, underdeveloped coping skills, and increased anxiety. Yeah. So, you know, you try to protect and then you end up creating a child that is anxious. It's like so dependent on you. Yeah, dependent, exactly. Codependency. Yeah. And I think I had a little bit of that style. A little bit. I think, (laughs) I honestly, I think that you recognize that later in your, you know, like, wow, I knew you even. Yeah. And like, you were aware of it. Yeah. And my mom was too. I yeah. think she knows that she was very, very involved. Uh, and she's like learned about that as we've grown you up. You're an interesting combo of free range. I know. And free range and helicopter. And helicopter. Yeah. It was, it was free range in the way that like I was very unsupervised I like uh-huh. in play and I was allowed to like do whatever I wanted with and, friends. And like learning. And learn. Yeah. yeah. I, I had a very like, in, and I was just like naturally independent and like I would go to my room and read for four hours when I was like four. Like yeah. that's just a little weird. But like I just enjoyed doing that. <laughs> Where's um, the head of yeah, She's she reading. Doesn't play? No, she's alone. Uh, but my mom would solve problems. Yeah. She was very nurturing. You know, in terms of that, I I would like I don't think it was to a fault. I really appreciated having all that support yeah. growing up. But you know, maybe I'd be a better problem solver uh, if I had had to solve my problems. I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, it's nice that you know. Yeah. Your mom was always there to support you. Yeah. For and mom and dad. I'm the yeah. George, I love you. Uh, yeah. I just mean like your parents were always there to figure out whatever was going on in your life. Yes. With you. Absolutely. You know? It's cool. Yeah. I don't think you were helicopter parented, which is kind of surprising. No, I wasn't. I think that there is a tendency in the disability community. That's what I meant. I didn't mean it's surprising based on your parents. Oh, yeah, no. Like, I'm not surprised that your parents didn't. I'm just saying that there is that tendency. Yeah, often disabled children are helicopter parented, uh, and mine did not do that. And they were very, you know, willing to let me learn about the world on my own. Yeah. You know, with structure and support, but they weren't on top of me like don't get hurt disabled boy yeah your parents did a good job (laughs) i have to say hear that mom and dad wow great job great job (laughs) uh the next one paranoid parenting oh that sounds worse than helicopter i haven't really ever heard of this one like this every list that i looked up had slightly different ones you know so like this might not be one of the eight main this uh, beyond the psychological ones yeah it's all just these are all just made up yeah so. so paranoid parenting that feels like helicopter but like even more so yeah or maybe it's like are you 
worried all the time that you're not doing a mm, good job I wonder. or that your kid is like being bad? I wonder. Uh, so it is control like this parenting style is controlled by worrisome and fear. Okay, that's not grammatically correct. <laughs> what uh, website are you using? <laughs> the taught. <laughs> this is Tim's parenting advice dot com. <laughs> <laughs> The tot dot com. Um, so worry and fear that something might happen to their children. So okay. it's like an anxiety. I feel like that's like a postpartum anxiety. Thing. Yeah. I that I don't know if that's so much a parenting style as like a mental health issue. Well, I did see myself. Ver- that's a mental health issue. <laughs> Wait, what is it again? I'm gonna make sure I heard you correctly. Parent parenting. Uh, parenting style controlled by worry and fear that something might happen to their children. Uh, yeah, no, that's gonna be me. Yeah, I'm super anxious. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Is that just feels like an anxious parent? Yeah. Not so much like a parenting style. No, but I guess how can a style be defined by <laughs> just constant? Well. I should see it. Okay, so it says uh, <sighs> parents not allowing their children to join in activities due to safety concerns. That's helicopter <laughs> to me. Yeah, like not letting our kids go on field trips. Yeah. I hope we don't do that. Children's outdoor and creative play is restricted due to anxieties. Parents have a set perception on the lack of safety in the world around them. Okay, I mean, I'm going to worry about our kids whenever they're doing anything. I know. But I don't think it will inform how I... Yeah. Allow them to do things. Yeah. I'm not gonna be like, no, you may not go to the pool because you might drown. Yeah. I'm gonna be at the pool with them. Yeah. Being like, be careful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna be a helicopter parent. Not too much be careful, <laughs> Shane. <laughs> we were just talking about that. There was that whole thing of like don't say be careful yeah, because I don't you're... think I agree with that, but Well, you're supposed to give more <sighs> constructive advice like, do you think walking along the edge of the pool is safe? <laughs> <laughs> That's so passive aggressive. I know. That <laughs> feels like passive aggressive parenting. Uh, hey, little Josh. Yeah. Are you sure you want to be doing it that way? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then the last one positive parenting. <laughs> Sounds good. I know. Uh, is that just like praising often or like everything, regardless of like its objective value? Well, no. Uh, that's what it sounds like, but the, it's, they're basically just saying it's like a good, a good thing. Okay. This says the focus of positive parenting is to establish love and connection and to resist the temptation to be punitive, but rather guide with control and empathy. This is like my gold standard. Yeah. You know, like that's the goal. It sounds like authoritative. Yeah, yeah. it does. Um, parents who are committed to regulating their own emotions. So like, that's a goal. That's it. Uh, it's parents did not to. Blow up about families that don't need to be blown up about. Yeah. Parent shows unconditional love. Parent focuses on establishing a connection before the correction of behaviors. Oh, I feel like I've seen that a lot in stuff that I've like watched yeah. videos. That's like they they burn something when they're making breakfast. Yeah. And you're like before you say you should be more careful and I'm sorry, I know careful is not. Well, it's okay. You need to keep keep an eye on yeah. things that are on the stove. First, you say, I know you're very smart, yeah. and you love the tech, and I love that about you. Yeah. I love the tech, too, Aww. but I don't burn things, because I'm not <laughs> a bad tech, and you are. You were so <laughs> close. You were so close. That was really good, Shane. Now, get in your bedroom. You no, <laughs> no dinner. You almost got there. <laughs> uh, this says that limits are set, but they are set with empathy, which is really similar to authori- authoritative yeah. parent. I don't really know the difference. I think uh, that the, 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 my, my big takeaway here, mm-hmm. I mean, I did more. No, I was just going to say that this, it says this parenting style has a great deal of research supporting it, that it's like very successful. So I think it's more of the thing of like, if the child is upset, you're like, it's okay to be upset. Like, I know you're yeah. feeling really upset, but we are leaving the park now. You know, like right. those kinds of things where it's like, you're connecting and then you're maintaining that boundary. Yeah. And being like, it's not permissive where you're saying, we, so we don't have to leave the park because you're upset. Yeah. And you're like, it's it's okay to be upset, but we're still leaving. Yeah, that, I like that. I think what I was saying about my big case about here is like, treat kids like the future adults that they are. Yeah. Treat them with kindness and respect and empathy and yeah. support. Don't, like how we would treat each other. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Be, be regular. Be normal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that that's like too big, but yeah. use logic and reason and compassion and yeah. chill well, don't be on chill. top of them all the time yeah that's all i'm gonna have to say to you chill chill <laughs> and if they spill their milk 
It's okay. Punish them appropriately. You get the wrist, <laughs> as you always like to say. You, <laughs> you disobey, you get the wrist. <laughs> What was that from? I love that. You've been saying that for like literally five years. And it means nothing. It means you get the wrist does not mean anything at all. And I think it's hilarious. Yeah. Well, you disobey, you get the wrist. I am pretty funny. <laughs> I did my, my style of parrotail. Humor? Humor based. Yeah, of course. I'm going to bring them into the world with a clown nose on. Yeah. It's going to be a good time. That'll be really fun. All right. Well, that was that was a good discussion. I think we're really aligned. I'm not worried. I feel better than I thought I would. Oh, good. I thought I was going to be going through that like, no, I don't know what that is. What yeah. is that? Yeah. But it all sounds pretty. It's very logical. Parenting is so easy. <laughs> ah, this stuff We've is. We've got this. I haven't figured out. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone that is a parent watching yeah, they're like, is oh, like, these idiots. <laughs> these idiots, yeah. <laughs> All right, should we move on to your game? Let's take a quick break. Yay or nay, junkyard murder. I need pen. some coffee, and then we'll be back with Double Down, Triple Blood, oh. Master Mayhem, Agree or Disagree, <laughs> Cage Match. Here we go. Free Range. All right. Helicopter Crash. Okay. Mayhem. Game. All right, we are back, and if you're watching on YouTube, you can see this, but if you're not, I have set up a phone holder contraption on my mm-hmm. wheelchair. It is just, it's just a phone holder, actually. It's not really a contraption. It feels like a contraption, uh, but I'm using it because I am now going to be reading you, Hannah, some agree or disagree statements. I found this by literally typing agree or disagree questions oh. on YouTube, on uh, Google. Okay. Picking the very first result. All right. Of course you did. Not reviewing it whatsoever. This will be good then. Here we go. Okay. First one. Playing a game is fun only when you can win. When you can win? When you win. Sorry. Oh. I was like... <laughs> I added a word. What sort of game? Um... Agree. I knew you would agree. I don't want to agree. It's a bad thing about me, but I don't have fun if I don't win. It's I true. know. I, it frustrates me. I know. Because we can like, be playing video games, and we'll be b- back and forth. Like I'll be winning, and you'll be winning, and yeah. you get really mad when I'm winning. I know. Maybe something about my parenting style <laughs> growing up can take it up with my mother. <laughs> we should dig into that a little bit. <laughs> eh? This is a fun one. Decisions that people make quickly are always wrong. Uh, false. That's the silliest thing I've ever heard. I guess always is ridiculous. I can't, yeah, I don't agree with any always statement. So that was How easy. about often? I'll change it to no, often. No, disagree. I think I might agree with often. Whatever. I really like to ponder a decision before making a decision. Mm, I've made a lot of decisions very quickly and I've always been right. So. I don't know, I feel even mostly wrong. <laughs> when people succeed... It's because of hard work. Luck has nothing to do with success. Oh my God, false. What What in the world are these questions? False, <laughs> these, false, false. I agree with that. Thank you. I do think hard work plays a role. Yeah, we've had a fight about this. We did have a Shane big thinks fight. that hard work plays a larger role in success than I do. It's uh-huh. not, it doesn't. What do you think does? Luck, you, um, luck and societal structures and circumstance and uh-huh. all of the things that have nothing to do with hard work. I agree that those... That's that's eighty percent of it. No. Yes. Yes. I'll give you fifty. This it's is more, what our fight is about. It's more than hard work. So many people work. Like it depends on what you're defining success as. But there are people who work so much harder than we work. Who I don't know what you're defining success as. But if it's just like amount of money that you make, then they're less successful. Uh, that's a very shallow way of looking at success. Then what are you using as self satisfaction? Then it's not hard work at all. Then I think that's just a mindset. That you have to work hard to achieve. Okay. Mm-mm. See, we fight about this. <laughs> oh, wait, what the heck? <laughs> this list. <laughs> All right, so you got a flavor of what these are about, right? Uh-huh. Here's the next one. Sweden is the best country in the world. <laughs> what <laughs> website is this? I have an idea this was written in Sweden. What website? <laughs> I don't know. I can't see it. Oh, timstudies.com. Oh, my. Kim? Uh-huh. When I had my parenting styles... And I told you the website. You thought it was Tim's Parenting. Tim. Oh, my God. Isn't that weird? And this is Tim with yeah, a K. Yeah, Kim. Kim's. Wow. Okay, well, Kim, um, 
I don't know. I've been to Sweden. It was nice. What was Sweden like? Very neat. It was very neat and clean. I liked it. I it's wouldn't say it, it's the best. I don't know if it's the best country in the world. How I had to visit all of them. define that? Exactly. Yeah. You know? This is nebulous. Have you ever heard of the United States <laughs> of America? <laughs> I know which is the best. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that we both got Shame. Southern accents for that one. Yeah, please. Oh, we're going to move on there. Um, it doesn't matter whether you enjoy your job or not. As long as it's a well-paying job. I did not make these up. I am just reading this list. I guess it depends on your goal. I mean, I think it matters, but like if, if, yeah, a job, if it's money, then that's fine. I don't, that's a personal decision. I guess we're not saying if these are true or not. Oh, like universally true. Like, do I agree? If personally agree. I think it would depend on the circumstance. Do I need the money? Then I agree. Do I not need it? Then I would rather enjoy my job. Yeah. It is okay to lie. <laughs> Whoa. All right. Hannah? Agree. I agree. I think I agree, too. Yeah, of course there's some times when lying is best. <laughs> so you give me an example. I mean, not off the top <laughs> of my head. Like, like, not if someone says, do I have something in my teeth? Then I don't think you should lie. <laughs> but, like, there are definitely times when I think it's best to lie. Did you like my... My perf- my musical performance. Yeah, something yes. like that. Yeah. I don't think you need to say I'm like, no. Going back to Paratam, your kid is like, "Is my art good?" Yeah. And it's the worst thing you've ever and you're seen. You're like, "You're not very good at art." <laughs> that's not. I don't think well, that's it helpful. Well, may be true. Yeah. <laughs> that's gonna set them up for problems down the road. Yeah, I think it's okay to like just to bend the to to, to lie a bit sometimes. This is this list is getting weird. I should have looked Shane, a little harder. You really should have. <laughs> This was your one job. Old people are funny. What in the actual world is Shane? <laughs> Timstudies.com, everyone. <laughs> Not me. Why was this the first result on the web on like Google? Google has identified this as old people are the funny? What is that? List no, I mean <laughs> depends on the individual. That's the same as saying young people are funny. Your dad is funny. Like he, yeah. he, he means to be yeah, but funny. is that supposed to be like I think like old people are funny in I a mean know. way? I don't know. Ask him. Then disagree. Cinnamon smells good. <laughs> <laughs> I love that the first three were like heavy and like philosophical, and now we're in the light. I don't think that cinnamon smells that good. Wow. So is that a hot take? Yeah, I was. Uh, <laughs> I said that with the least interest possible. I'm just like, I don't like cinnamon gum. I don't like cinnamon f- candles. So I guess no to me. I mean, does anyone on earth, when the dentist says, what flavored toothpaste would you like here? Mint? Cinnamon? Bubble gum? Yes, yeah, some people do does choose cinnamon. Does anyone say cinnamon? No. They must. Well, I don't trust them. I always choose mint. I think it's disgusting to choose. That's a good agree or disagree. I think it's disgusting to choose anything but mint. I, I would never... I did raspberry last time. Yeah. And not, mm-mm, no. I just can't put, I can't grind anything into my teeth that isn't mint based yeah. on my lifetime of toothpaste. And then we went out to eat right after, and I felt like I had raspberry mouth the whole That's time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one. This must have been written like 30 years ago. Letters are better than email. Oh, I don't understand this list. You- <laughs> you chose this list. This is why you have to look. I, I looked at a lot of different websites before I chose my parenting you website. You did this last night. I did this today. I didn't do this last night. I did mine today. I found my website today. What did you Ow. say? About- I'm having ovary pain. <laughs> I'm yelling. <laughs> I think we should wrap this up here. Wait, l- letters are better than email? Disagree. I disagree. As I mean, well. letters are fine, but I think an letters email is fine. Letters are evilist, but if you can't hold a pen <laughs> <laughs> or a quill. Or <laughs> yeah, bird mail is better than a horse mail. <laughs> Pony Express is not as good as pigeons. All right, everyone. Okay. That was your mayhem. Do you think we're ready to be parents? Oh, boy. Well, we've got a bit. We've got a bit. We know the parents. We'll read some styles. more books. We've got this. I am an authoritative, free range, <laughs> anxious, anxious, <laughs> fear based, fear based. <laughs> But loving, <laughs> communicative parent, and punishing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gonna be fantastic. Oh, uh, um, well, that was your mayhem. If you enjoyed this episode, 
Uh, what did I do? Hannah? Please leave us a review, a five star review. Please uh, comment, like, whatever platform you're on. Do whatever uh-huh. you can. Tell your friends. Yep. And it's a junkyard out there. And in addition to the junkyard, we have just opened up our daycare. <laughs> We've cleared out some of the rubble, some of the rubbish. Uh, there might be a few needles out there yeah, still. Yeah, probably from my, from my metal. IVF. <laughs> but if you feel that you're a free-range parent uh, and you would like to let your kid come explore the <laughs> junkyard. dated junkyard, they it's won't safe. escape. It's safe. For a few hours every day, our prices begin at $3,000 a month. <laughs> uh, we do not provide food. Okay. Goodbye.